Terror Wolf. Uh, this is going to be my uh, first vlog. I would like to start it by saying that for anyone who's on the channel right now, I dearly thank you. The uh, two of you that are there as I'm making this vlog, I thank you deeply. Sincerely, I really thank you. However, I want to point out this very fuzzy vlog is not about me. It's about the election cycle in the... It's about the 2016 election cycle, so anyone who does not want to hear about Trump and Hillary, tune out now. Otherwise, please listen to what I have to say. Because, quite honestly, this is these are the reason, the very, in my opinion, this is why I cannot vote for Trump, and it's why I cannot allow Trump to take public office. First, and one that has been just hammered again and again by the Clinton campaign, he is unfit, he is temperamentally unfit to go into public office. You can't go into public office and just say, I'm going to run everyone here roughshod if you don't do what I say. You can't do that. The U.S. system of government is about compromise. And you don't get all of what you want. Sorry, you don't get it all. No one does, or you're not supposed to. That's why partisan movements are supposed to be looked on with shame. But all, I, all we see at this point is two parties fighting against each other for the will of their half of America. Do we really want that? Second, Trump has been using racial tactics and extremely divisive tactics at that the entire campaign. His entire campaign through the Republican primary and on, only up until recently has he, only recently has he not been using those tactics. For example, we're going to build a wall and make Mexico pay for it. No. First off, in order to make Mexico pay for it, he would have to start a war. That's going to cost much more money than it's worth. Second, while the wall in and of itself technically is already there, he just wants to, he, all he wants to do is complete it. Walls are easily exploitable. End of story. The people guarding them can be exploited in one way or another. And it's not even necessarily the people guarding them. It could be the people within them. Like Donald Trump. As we all know, he is a businessman. Why do you think Hispanics come to America? And obviously, I'm a white guy. <laughs> I don't come from Mexico. But a lot of what I hear about it, and I have asked friends of mine who are Hispanic and were raised in Mexico for a time, or their parents told them the reasons that they came. And one of them... I will not disclose who, for a while, was an illegal immigrant. Le is now legalized and is a U.S. citizen, but for a while was an illegal immigrant. This, I, mean, I knew him in fifth grade when you didn't know not to talk about anything and everything. You know, I, elementary school BS. But back to the point. I don't know if he was lying for sure, but I know for a fact what he said about his parents was for a while they were illegal immigrants in the U.S. And that the reason they originally came was his dad had gotten a job in the U.S. And thus they thought they would at least be legal citizens of the United States. And if not citizens it, with full right to vote, that they could at least live here. So what ends up happening is these people get jobs. They are sent jobs because they can work cheaper than we do here because they won't be affected 
by minimum wage laws that have been set in place. Here's the problem with that. The only kind of schooling they can get is public schooling at that point. And I know some pretty terrible public schools. Uh, I've been around a few. I went to a really good one myself. I was in a pretty good system. Uh, but on the whole, there are many that are good and many that are just outright bad. I was in a, I was in a better one. But if you have to rely on a bad system, what's the point? In going there. They have no money to buy food or necessities. They are real that's where you get all that money spent in these government resources meant to fund the poor and make sure they are kept alive. Because you gotta remember, food stamps is meant for food. There are homeless shelters, there are food banks. There's all these different ways for them to get a hold of food, water, and shelter. However, it still has to be free. Because those who get jobs here have so little money, they can't get it any other way. And it's sad. It really is sad that businesses, businesses and businessmen like Donald Trump would take advantage of that. They can call it a business opportunity all they want. What they're doing is wrong. They're going in and taking advantage of anyone who doesn't speak English. And I'm not saying ESL is a good thing. I'm not saying it's a bad thing either. It is what it is. English is a second language. It simply means, okay, you don't speak English? Well, we'll teach you how to speak and write in English. Which helps them here in America because, hey, everything we do is in English. So that's my second problem with him. Third, he has proven to favor race, racial groups like white supremacists. On top of that, some of the stances he's taken really give them a megaphone that they should not have. They should not have a megaphone into the political mainstream. They don't need it. Why do we need to listen to, to people saying they want to go back to segregation? That's backtracking. We need to go forward, not backward. I'm sorry if you're a white supremacist. Obviously, my comments will offend you. I am not sorry that I said them, I am simply sorry that they offended you. Because I have my opinions. I have black friends. I have Hispanic friends. I have... I, I knew someone who was Muslim. He's not a bad guy. Heck, he was one of like, the nicest kids I ever met. And that's saying something, because usually kids are assholes. In the outright. Just blatant. Straight up. I'm going to be a complete jerk to you, and you're going to accept it. That's how that's how kids work. He was one of the nicest people I ever met, and he was my same age in ninth grade. That really goes to show. So, and I don't hate religion. Let me be clear. I'm liberal. I support complete separation of church and state. You know, I, 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 there are many things I support. I support some very socialist ideas. I'm going to put that out there right now. So, if you don't like that, you don't like that. But you know what? I don't care. What I care about is voting for what I care about. What you need to care about is vote about what you care about. Don't worry about what anyone else thinks. Worry about what you think and why you think it. If you think it because someone else told you it's a good idea, look into it. See if it really is. Don't And don't look at biased websites. Don't look at conservative or liberal or democratic or republican or libertarian or whatever you're looking at. Don't look at websites 
made by specific parties or specific factions. Look at something like NPR or the Associated Press, which go in and take as little bias as they can. There will always be a certain amount of bias to any press report or press release or media coverage or whatever. And it's just because the person who's covering that story has their own bias. No matter how much they try and keep it out, some of it will seep in. Be it word choice, be it how they go about the article itself, sometimes even the out, sometimes even the way the article looks on the page can be bias. And for those of you who think I'm joking, I'm not. I'm not joking about that. That's actually kind of that's true. When I was in journalism, I had to write a, in a certain font with a specific style just to make sure I didn't have any liberal crud going on and make sure I didn't have any, you know, liberal bias going on in my font. I was using Times New Roman. I was told to use Arial. Sans Serif font. Because Times was bias. I don't remember what to, because it was just so stupid. At the point. Look all this up for yourself. The reason I voted for Bernie Sanders was he supported free college education. Something I really think should be a thing. He was going to raise taxes to pay for that on top of many other things. For example, he doesn't like Obamacare. He's a liberal that hates Obamacare, but you know what? It's not socialist enough for him. He's come out and said it himself. He's a socialist. And I respect that. I respect someone who can come out in a country that hates on socialists and, and communists and say he's socialist. I respect that. Because what he's doing is he is standing up for his beliefs. If someone, t if someone can tell me that he's standing up for your beliefs... In a situation where you're just talking, there is no physical action going on, is a bad thing. And we're taking out haste and very extreme, I or not haste, hate, and harassment and very extreme ideas like that. And saying, just debating something. You cannot tell me standing up for yourself in a debate is a bad thing. And I say that because if I if I say standing up for yourself, if you can't tell me that's a bad thing, people will misconstrue that. <laughs> it's just how people are. Look, the thing is, there is so much we have to change, so much we have to fix. It's not a fight about what we need to fix. That's what they agree on. They agree everything has... A problem somewhere. For example, one thing Republicans and Democrats alike agree about is our immigration system sucks. It is one of the worst in the in the world. They agree on that. What they disagree on is how to go about it. Republicans want more punishments on those who come in. As a Democrat, and as a liberal, what I want is more punishments on the businesses who hire them. Meaning, if you can't get a job here before you get here, what's the point of getting here illegally? It kind of solves that problem, doesn't it? Why get here illegally when you can wait in a border town? There are many border towns because of how long a wait there really is. There's a 10, 15, 20 year backlog of people who are just trying to get into the country legally. And you're going to tell me that we should be extremely harsh on those who get in illegally. What, because it's unfair to those who have waited 20 years? I can understand that aspect of it. I certainly can. What I can't understand is why you're not going to go in and change the system itself. That's what comprehensive immigration reform is. It's not just giving them am amnesty and saying, okay, we're going to forgive you for coming in illegally. 
Because that's what amnesty is. We all know that. But it's also the idea of, hey, we're also going to make it take a lot less time to get in. We're going to get people in that backlog in as soon as we can. We're going to speed things up. I agree with that. We need to speed up that system. Otherwise, we're just going to keep running into the same problem over and over, and we're going to keep ramming our heads into a brick wall until either this country collapses or we solve the problem. And I mean collapses in on itself, from people arguing with each other. Here's the thing. Instead of arguing with each other and shouting at each other, how about we have a nice, calm debate? Yeah, I said it. A debate. <laughs> if you're not good at a debate, let your side argue it out. I mean, here's the thing. Hillary versus Trump. Who do we think is going to win? I think Hillary's going to win, but I mean, she's also got a lot of experience in debates. <sighs> I mean, it's just stacked in her favor there. But my thing is debate it on your own. See what other people think. React to it. And, and try and form your opinion. You need to form your own opinion. You cannot rely on the opinions of others. On top of that, to just vote straight party tickets, I want to look up more about my party right now. I'm registered as a Democratic voter. I vote in the Democratic primary. I mean, yeah, you could say that if you voted for them in the Democratic primary, why wouldn't you vote for them in the general? But, how about I put it like this? Uh, well, actually, I don't know. <laughs> Screw that. Um, there are people that change their opinions. And I mean, that's what the fight is right now between those two. Is Hillary Clinton is going in and saying, I'm going to take these moderate Republicans who are true to the idea of being a Republican, who are true to the idea of being a part of Lincoln's party, the party that freed black people. Yes, I'm opposing the party that started the views that I have. However... They do not have them right now. Thus, I'm a Democrat. And I mean, people make the argument of, pe of black people are Democrats from birth. Are you stupid? <laughs> I'm sorry to say that on YouTube in public, but are you stupid? No one has a preconceived notion like that from birth. Unless you're fucking Einstein 2.0, you're not going to have preconceived ideas. You're going to come out and it's going to be like, Mom, Dad, uh, uh, what's going on here? That's the best I got for that. <laughs> Don't, I'm probably going to get a lot of hell over that now. But, I mean, there's those. Four. And one that is extreme. Okay. Four and and one of and one of the two that are very important to me. He does not support gay rights. He can say he does all he wants. When he ran in the Republican Party, he expressly stated against it. What this means is that I'm having to worry about marriages within my own family being broken apart because a group of Christians is saying it impedes on their First Amendment rights to practice their religion. Excuse me? How do they do that? How does gay people getting married infringe on your right to practice your religion? It doesn't. What you're doing by saying they can't get married is you're infringing on their First Amendment right to happiness. And yes, I know how far one could take that. But there are laws against murder. And if you're going to tell me 
that if we allow gay marriage, we're eventually going to allow murder. I'm going to call you an idiot, and I'm going to tell you to leave me the heck alone, leave my family alone, don't infect them with your idiotic ideals. Because that's what they are. You have a preconceived notion that gay people are bad. I have four gay uncles. Those four are the nicest people I have met. Hands down. And I'm not saying that to say they're great, but when you take harassment like that, it teaches you not to do that to people. I can say that from experience. I took harassment from 1st through 8th grade, and I decided, you know what, I don't want to do this to someone else. I don't want to screw with someone else's life like that. I don't want to leave my name burned into their memory and not remember their name. Because I was just, it was just someone I was taunting and torturing. For days on end. Years. You know, however long. It's not right. Five. I will never know where he stands. And the fact that he's extremely dishonest in general. He has not released his tax returns, those of you who say that that's not a big deal. Yes, it is. It can reveal so, it, it can reveal so much about your financial history that there's got to be some major debt in there that he doesn't want people getting their hands on. There's got to be something in there that will get rid of any chance he has in the election. Because you got to remember, part of his bid is, I'm a businessman. I know how to make deals. I know how to make I know how to make money. If he doesn't know how to make money, if he it's all luck, he's gonna have one hell of a time in the general election. We all know that. So first off he needs to show his tax returns. Second, the main thing he ran on in the primaries was he ran his whole campaign about building a wall to separate Mexico and America, making Mexico pay for that wall, and having a ban on Muslim, in, eh, Muslim immigration and tourism. The Muslim ban and the wall. Those were his two key points. Those were the things he said the most about. Now, I would like to go back to Clinton's speech where she said, you know, where she was talking about people who took very unpopular ideas. And I mean, I don't think she mentioned Lincoln, but he is a, a very pro is she or, he is a prime example. Lincoln freed the slaves. That was extremely unpopular at the time, especially in the South. North didn't really care either way, but they said, you know what, they're people at least, they, you know, they should at least be paid for their service. Whether they're dumb or not, and this was how it was at the time, I don't think black people are dumb. Do not take this out of context. What this is, is I'm trying to reiterate what they, were, what they thought at the time. Because again, 1800s, and the 1860s were quite different from now. Now we've got people like Neil deGrasse Tyson, one of the most brilliant people on the planet. He's black. I know black people are intelligent. I know they're super intelligent black people. White people are actually one of the more idiotic people, in my opinion, right now. You know why? Because there's white supremacist groups, but I've never heard mention of a black supremacy group. I wonder why. No, seriously. I don't wonder why. You know why? Because the blacks understand that feeling. Or at least that's what I think of it. Because again, I have to relate it to my experience being harassed, which might not be, which is probably nowhere near accurate. But it's the best thing I got. Lastly, other than those five things, what he says out loud and what the rest of his campaign says 
Hillary should be put before a firing squad for treason. Okay, how did she commit treason? Was it the email server? Because she didn't... Her treason is the purposeful act. The purposeful... Meaning your intended purpose is to do this. It is the purposeful act of betraying your country. She did not commit treason. She did not mean for any information to get leaked from her server. It happened. She never made it a secret that she had an email server. She never deleted any emails. She sent them the email server to look at. She went to the Benghazi hearing and was completely honest. What people harp about on her about most is she said she never sent any classified information. Here's the thing. She could have sent information on that server beforehand, and it became classified after she sent it. That's a problem, isn't it? If you can't prove when it was classified compared to when she sent it, guess what? You're screwed! I'm willing to give her the benefit of the doubt on that one, because... Classified information can be a little tricky. You have multiple levels of classified information. You have, you know, dates when it becomes classified. So if you send it before then... Oops. Uh... You know, this one was like, Oh, that became class... Okay. Well then. There's no way out. And if you're going to attack the Clinton Foundation, how about I put it like this? So, you want her to close off the Clinton Foundation and stop all the uh, good that it's doing as well. Because I can understand, you know, there being possible ties to other countries, and those ties controlling something she does in office. I can see that. I can understand that. I think she should make a new head of the foundation and be done with it. I think that would solve the problem. So, that's, that's really all I got for this uh, vlog. This is about as long as a normal gaming video would be, so please, uh, if, if you want to talk about any of this, you can reach me in many different ways. I have, obviously, my YouTube channel. Um, if you want to email me about it, I'll, I'll have the email address in the description below. I'll also, be, I'll also be putting my DeviantArt account in the description below. Yes, I have a DeviantArt account, and I know there's dirty stuff on there. Just don't go to the dirty shit. <laughs> Just send me a message. Anyway, DeviantArt, email. I'll have Google Plus in there as well. So, and those are really the only three good ways to get a hold of me at the moment. So, please, think about who you're voting for this, this voting cycle. Please, think about it. And make your decision not based on, oh, she's Democrat, he's Republican, you know, oh, what party do I want? This isn't about parties anymore. What this is about is the future of America, and the future not just of minority um, Americans, but of the future of the entire country. How divided are we going to be? Are we going to be together, or set? are we going to be, you know, are we going back to the 1860s? Are we going to be that separated? A lot of people say we won't. They said that right before the Civil War as well. Right up until the southern states seceded from the Union. So. That's all I got for right now. Uh, if, if you liked it, if you want me to talk about more political stuff ever again, but if you want me to talk about political stuff again, or if you want me to give info sessions like this, um, like it, say so in the uh, comments below, please. And if you like my videos in general, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, 
<laughs> Sayonara.